Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance. My name is Chaz Andres, and as always, we're going to get started with the news. The biggest story of the week? Well, how could it be anything other than War of the Spark? Magic's latest set is making its impact felt in Standard, and in Modern as well. Let's begin with Standard, where the addition of War of the Spark to the format has thrown, you know, a little bit of gasoline onto the smoldering fire of Standard Finance. A lot of Standard cards that are staples in the format from previous sets, cards like Teferi and Rekindling Phoenix and even Hydroid Crisis are all up a little this week after spending weeks or even months in decline. Now, is this going to be the start of a major Standard rally on MTGO? I'm pretty skeptical. There's a reason why these cards went down in price to begin with and those reasons still hold true. A lot of them aren't available for set redemption anymore, and, well, a lot of people moved their standard play over to Arena. This hasn't changed that. But the fact that standard prices are up at all speaks well for the fact that people do still play standard and MTGO. The format is not dead on here yet, and cards do hold a value beyond just what you can do with set redemption. Now, over in Modern, the biggest thing that War of the Spark has done is spawn a brand new combo deck. It's called Neoform Combo, it's a bit of a Grishol brand variant, it is a very, very powerful deck. It can kill on turn 1 sometimes, turn 2 and 3 with more consistency than you'd think, and even though a lot of its staples haven't spiked a ton in MTGO yet, well, at least not as much as they have in paper, they have still gone up in price. Cards like Allosaurus Rider, Nourishing Shoal, and Chancellor of the Tangle, nobody really wanted these cards a few weeks ago. In most cases, they're up like four to 500% this week, thanks to how powerful this Neoform combo deck is. So to me, the real question right now isn't whether Neoform combo is legit, because it is. The real question to me right now is, is it gonna be banned? Or are people going to develop enough ways to deal with it to sort of suppress it, maybe lower that turn kill a bit so that it doesn't get banned? And that to me is the question that determines whether or not we should be chasing these staples or not. If you think that it's just too good no matter what and it's going to get banned, I'd stay away because Wizards really does not want turn 2 and 3 kills in the modern format. But if you think there's a way to sort of keep it in check while maintaining it, I don't know, as a tier 2 deck for a while, well, then you should probably be buying some of these cards right now because this deck, it's very good. Let's move on now to gaining ground. And I promised I would get to this card a little bit earlier, so here we are right now. It's the number one gainer of the week, Nexus of Fate up 10 full tickets this week, tripling in price from 5 all the way up to 15. And could it really be true? A standard card that's expensive because of standard play, not because of, you know, modern shenanigans or set redemption rigmarole? Well, maybe. I mean, Set Redemption's out of the window here. Nexus of Fate is a buy a box promo. It was never available for Set Redemption on MTGO, but there might be some modern stuff afoot here because I have been seeing some Wilderness Reclamation decks popping up in modern. But based on the other standard cards that have gone up in price this week and the fact that Nexus decks are becoming popular and standard again, I have to believe that a large part of this value increase is due to standard. Now, I don't really know what Nexus's long-term price chart is going to look like, but I do know that right now it's pointing straight up. Now, if it does start to see sustained modern play, that's the thing that's going to keep the price at or above the 20 ticket mark. That's when you'd want to really be in for the long haul. But otherwise, I don't think this standard hype cycle is going to last all that long on MTGO. And what that means is that Nexus of Fate is probably going to peak and start to drop again, perhaps even later this week. So, if you've got some Nexuses kicking around in your collection, you're looking for the best time to sell, I would monitor this chart and sell the next time it looks like it's going to peak and start dropping off. Let's move over to Modern now, where the card that gained the most ground this week was Mycosynth Lattice, gaining 5 tickets from 3 up to 8. And this is a pretty substantial jump for a card that was essentially available for bulk just a couple of weeks ago. What happened here? Well, it's all about the combo with War of the Sparks' Karn the Great Creator. If you can get Mycosynth Lattice and Karn out and play together, you can effectively shut down all of your opponent's abilities, including all of their mana abilities. Now, I do want to pump the brakes on this hype train a little because, first of all, this deck hasn't really become established, and second of all, you really only need one copy of Mycosynth Lattice in your sideboard. You can wish for it with Karn, which makes it a one of in most decks that are going to run this interaction. So that means that you're not going to get rich off of Mycosynth Lattice. 
That said, the price chart is still pointed straight up at the moon, so there's probably still some room to grow here. Wanting 10 or 15 tickets for your lattice at this point doesn't seem unreasonable to me. So I wouldn't, you know, hold on to these forever, but I wouldn't sell yet. There's probably still a little more growth to come. Let's move on now to our biggest losers, where in standard, it was Nicol Bola's Dragon God dropping the most this week. It plunged 10 full tickets from 17 all the way down to 7, and there's one very simple reason why. Grixis Control did not establish itself as a tier 1 deck in the new metagame on week 1. I don't even really think it's tier 2 at this point, so Nicol is a bit of a dragon without a home. Couple that to the fact that there are good cards in War of the Spark, cards like Liliana Dreadhorde General and God Eternal Kefnet, and they are on the rise, and you know, there's really nowhere for Nickel to go but down right now. At some point, perhaps Grixis Control will establish itself as a real deck, and this card will rise in price, but I think that it's going to keep dropping until slash unless that happens. Now, over in Modern, we have a pretty interesting Biggest Loser this week. It's actually Karn Liberated, dropping 5 tickets from 35 down to 30. And at first, this kind of surprised me because Tron actually did pretty well at the Mythic Championship at London last weekend, but then I realized, well, we all knew that Tron was going to be one of the key decks that would improve with the London Mulligan, so everybody who went to London probably bought a place out of Carnes on MTGO in order to test before the event. And now the event is over, so a lot of those players can, you know, sell their Carnes if they're not going to keep playing Tron. That may be what's moving the market here. At any rate, it does appear to be continuing to drop. I'd expect it to stabilize, you know, somewhere in the 20 to 25 range, and it's long-term future, well, we won't know that until we see what shows up in Modern Horizons. Now, the sneak of the week this week is Lord Windgrace, a card from the Commander sets that was only available via treasure chest on MTGO. The card was as high as 13 tickets back in December, shrunk down to just a single ticket in January, and is now up to 33 tickets and continuing to rise. Now, I did some research for this video, I tried to see if there was a competitive deck, maybe some sort of legacy deck running it, couldn't find anything, so my current working theory is that this is a rare unicorn in the world of MTGO. It is a card that is expensive because people are playing it casually, and the supply is just so low that people are willing to pay 30 some odd tickets for it. At any rate, the price is just continuing to rise, so if you've got any Lord Windgraces, I'd hold on to them for now. Just ride this train all the way to the end, wherever that end is going to be. As always, we're going to end the week by taking a look at the MTGO Trader sales data over the past seven days. And this gives us a great idea about which cards sold the best, regardless of price increases or decreases. Looking at overall sales by volume, the uncommon Planeswalkers from War of the Spark absolutely crushed the list this week. Sahili, Narset, Davriel, Ashiok, these were the four best-selling cards of the week by volume. It says a lot about their desirability that these cards sold so well despite the fact that most of them, at least two or three of them, are not going to see much constructed play, but people want them anyway. So, even though they're not worth all that much right now, I'd make sure I have a few playsets of each in your collection at some point soon. Just don't wait until after War of the Spark stops being the active draft format, because that's when the price is going to probably start to increase. Now, in terms of overall sales by price, it's the typical suite of modern staples at the top of this list. There are a couple of interesting trends, though. First of all, Arclight Phoenix. For the first time in recent memory, Arclight Phoenix is not even top 10 in terms of best-selling cards by price. People are not buying this card right now. And that speaks to a couple of things. First, Guilds of Ravnica Set Redemption is over. Second, people just aren't playing as much Is It Phoenix in Modern anymore. It's still popular, but is no longer the most popular deck in the format. So because of that, I would expect the price of Arclight Phoenix to keep dropping in price. If you're looking to buy in, I wouldn't do it just yet. We're not at the bottom of the market. Now, the other interesting trend I saw this week is that Karn the Great Creator was the best-selling standard card of the week by this metric in a top five card overall. Now, if you combine that with the Mycosynth Lattice Spike, you've got something interesting here because it tells me that a lot of people are putting their money where their mouth is in terms of this deck being a thing they want to build in Modern. This price spike hasn't really translated into the world of paper magic yet, and I haven't seen a ton of viable deck lists yet, but I do think that those things are coming. Expect Karn's price to increase as people tinker around with this shell more and more in MTGO's most popular format. 
and that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chaz Andres, and I will see you again next Monday morning for another episode of This Week in Magic Online Finance.